So I tried living in Las Vegas, but we're 10 to 15 years from retirement and honestly, not ready at all. And face it, our world is messed up. Supply chains are in turmoil, inflation is out of control, the money system is totally corrupt, and our friends and family are completely split over pointless political ideologies, which I don't even care about. It's like we've been severed from everything we've known these past few years. I just want to find an affordable, pretty place to live with good services where I can grow food and become more self-sufficient. So this spring, the hubby and I drove down to Vegas to live like locals for a couple of weeks. The first stop on a huge loop we'd be doing, exploring places to live around the Northwestern United States. We were also going down there for some firearms training in Pahrump so that we could learn to better defend ourselves as is our right and duty as American citizens. To keep our trip costs low, we did a home exchange, which is a fantastic way to travel for cheap. So three maps, it takes three maps to get to here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just directing me. There's no map on that lawn. Oh, he's just telling you when to turn. The home we stayed at was in Spring Valley, a nice middle-class neighborhood about 15 minutes from the Strip. I didn't take any footage inside because it's a really personalized residence, but these are some pics from the website. It was clean and comfortable, and after finding our way in, we dropped off our luggage and found a great Korean barbecue place in the neighborhood. The first thing we did when we got here, of course, was we went to the Strip, because when you're in Las Vegas, you've got to go to the Strip. Where are we? What are we doing? So we're at the Venetian in Las Vegas. So we kind of wandered around there, walked around the canal shops, got ice cream, looked in some of the stores. Um, we ended up walking seven and a half miles, kind of meandering through the strip, going to Caesars and stopping for you know, daiquiris and pizzas along the way and just kind of you know seeing all the things. We walked all the way down to the Bellagio and looked at the conservatory there, which had this beautiful display of flowers and balloons and it was just really magical. It was crowded, but it was definitely a pretty amazing display. The floor as you go up the stairs here. Oh, it's got real clouds in it. The thing about the Strip is it's such a slice of American life. Yeah, good people watching. Very crowded though, so you've just got to bring your expect crowds mentality. And the traffic in the area is pretty, pretty heavy. But it is fun to know that it's there, and I suppose if you live here that's kind of a a nice thing because you've just got all this entertainment. I had big plans for our two weeks in Vegas. Like, I wanna see a little bit more of Summerlin. I know that's a really nice neighborhood. I wanna see Henderson because online it looks like it has a really cute downtown. And then I also kinda of wanna explore the Arts District, which is somewhere around the Fremont experience. Mount Charleston is definitely on the list of things to do. It's like this little oasis of uh, alpine goodness. But before we could do all that, we had to hunker down and work for a few days. One of the best things about Vegas were all the great neighborhood restaurants where we could get lunch. Now, I've never been a fan of dim sum, but Ted loves it. So he found this place and oh my God, it was so good. So we went back a whole bunch of times. Toward the end of the week, our firearms training at Front Sight began. So every day at 6.30 a.m., we had to get up and commute halfway to Perunk. I was really nervous because guns are frankly terrifying, but these folks were top shelf professionals. Institute. Yeah, that makes it special. I mean, they train actual law enforcement from all over the U.S. here. So we started with classroom instruction and then quickly moved into building skills on the gun range every day, all day, for four days. It's already day three of the front sight gun training, and it's really amazing. It's top notch. It was exhausting but incredible and I'm no longer afraid of firearms. Highly recommend, totally do it. During our second week living in Las Vegas, we drove around to see some neighborhoods of interest. Our biggest challenge in finding a place to retire is affordability and though the concrete suburban Vegas vibe isn't honestly my first choice, we have to consider it due to budgetary constraints. So we started with Summerlin. Summerlin is a master plan community on the west side of the Las Vegas Valley. Bordered by the Spring Mountains and Red Rock Canyon to the west, it's partly within the city limits of Las Vegas and partly in unincorporated Clark County. It had a cute, clean downtown area with some interesting restaurants, but the stores seemed like typical upscale mall stores that you'd find anywhere, so it felt kind of generic to me. The median list price for a home in the central area of Summerlin, zip code 89135, is currently one 
1,299,000, and here's what you get for 500,000, roughly. It's a strong seller's market in this part of town with anything under 592,000 typically selling within 17 days. Upscale suburban is how I describe the area. So we're talking gated communities everywhere, all with HOAs making sure your yard looks perfect. Summerlin's proximity to miles of hiking in next door Red Rock Canyon was a huge bonus, but it's the desert. So in the hot, hot summers, you'd have to do your hiking at the crack of dawn. Summerlin is obviously a really nice place to live, but it wasn't singing to me personally. So I was curious to see what else Vegas had to offer. Plus we met a random viewer in a cool little coffee shop where he shared his experiences living in Vegas. So thanks Jack. It was a bit of a drive down a crowded freeway to get to Henderson. Located 16 miles southeast of Las Vegas, Henderson is the second largest city in Nevada and it's been growing by leaps and bounds for the past few decades. We headed straight for downtown, better known as Water Street District. It was this cool little area recently redeveloped with an interesting mix of shops and restaurants. And even though it wasn't as polished as downtown Summerlin, I liked it better for its unique character. We found this great fajitas place with $4 margaritas. I didn't know those still existed in the world. And oh my gosh, the food and the waiter, they were all so nice. Okay, when? <laughs> the median list price for a home in the area was more affordable at $666,000 and here's what you could get for around $500,000. It's a strong seller's market in Henderson as well with anything under $590,000 typically selling in 14 days. We didn't drive much around the area though because we were beginning to realize that the whole desert Vegas vibe just wasn't for us. But maybe Mount Charleston would be different. But first, we had to go back to the Strip and see a show because it's Vegas. So we ended up seeing Rich Little and oh my God, he's as old as my dad. I can't believe he's still doing this, but it was fun and intimate and not that expensive, totally worth it. Before heading up to Mount Charleston, we drove through the Arts District, which is just a bit north of the Fremont Street experience. And yeah, there wasn't much going on. Homeless people. <laughs> Well, it's a work in progress, I guess. This hotel's cool. I guess it's a nightlife place. I would have liked to have stopped and explored a little more, but we were pressed for time. It seemed like a good start on a significant redevelopment project, and I'm sure there's more to it than what we saw at first glance. Okay, Mount Charleston. This was the part of the trip I was most excited about because I love mountains. Mount Charleston is an unincorporated town about an hour northwest of Las Vegas. Its namesake peak at 11,916 feet above sea level is the highest point in Clark County, with the community sitting at about 7,500 feet. This means it's much, much cooler than Vegas. In fact, the day we went, it was 20 degrees cooler. So 66 versus 86 degrees, absolute heaven. The median list price for a home in the area is $822,000, but it's a small place with not a lot of inventory for sale. Anything under $475,000 typically sells in 84 days, and the market is pretty well balanced between buyers and sellers. Here's what you get for about $500,000. <laughs> The day we were there, we met up with some friends who were traveling in the area and took a short hike <laughs> partway up the mountain. There are a lot of trails around Mount Charleston, but even in late March, many were still covered with snow. <laughs> 
While we love the quiet mountain vibe of Mount Charleston with its gorgeous peak views, there was no gas station and no grocery store, so it would be a challenge to live there full time without those basic services nearby, and I have no idea about the internet. We drove from the south part of the community to the north where we discovered a couple of restaurants and hotels, and they had an actual ski hill, which looked like it'd be fun to try sometime. Lunch outside on the mountain was awesome, but the entire area was so small, I couldn't see myself living there. Ultimately, Vegas wasn't for us. I can see why people like living there, but we learned that we don't want to live in the desert no matter how cheap it is. Water is always an issue. The summers are scorching hot and the sandy soil just isn't really a hospitable environment for growing food. We like trees and mountains and a lot less traffic and a lot fewer people, but that's just us. Next time, we're gonna take you up through Utah to see St. George, Provo, and Ogden on the way to Idaho and Montana to see some really cool mountain towns. I'm Diane and with my hubby Ted, we're looking for the best place to live in America given all the economic turmoil and insanity around us. Please say hello in the comments, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing.